Welcome to Oversharing with the Overbees. I'm Joe. And I'm Matt. And each week you can tune in to hear us respond to your voicemails, go in depth on our lives as content creators, and hopefully leave you feeling even better than we found you. With that being said, let's get to Oversharing. Hello, hello, everybody. Yeah. And uh, welcome back. Two weeks postpartum. Yeah. We're, we're here. We're doing it. This is our third episode of our parenting series. Yeah. Which really, oh. Special guest. Special guest, our crying child, immediately. It, it's number three. It's not even really a parenting series, I feel no. like. It's just us talking about keeping our pregnancy private offline. Yep. And then last week's, if you missed it, was all about uh, the pregnancy. We kind of recapped. Yeah. 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 The last nine months or so. Yeah. And now I'm excited about this one. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk to you guys all about our birth experience this go around versus having our daughter in 2021. Yeah. And we're going to kind of recap the last two weeks and what it's been like transitioning to a family of four. Yep. Yep. Go through actually having her, him. Yeah. Damn it. Keep doing that. <laughs> it's a real problem for me. I can't actually, uh, you know, I just, I've had a girl for two years and I have had a boy for two weeks and my brain can't actually reconcile those two things. Ah, <sighs> him. Him. Our, you know, our birth process with him. Yeah. And how it has been going with him. Yes. Yes. But before we get to that, let's kind of just. Recap the week. Yeah. I have had a thought. I can't get out of my head. And it's something you said this week where you said, imagine airplanes not existing and then just inventing one. And I was like, what? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I mean, that would be super wild. I saw a video clip of, it was a commercial. I think it was a Super Bowl commercial. Uh -huh. And we were watching and it was the Wright brothers up in an airplane sure. was the bit on <laughs> the clip. And I just thought to myself, how ludicrous had to, people have, had to have thought they were bat shit crazy. I mean, it's true. Yeah. Can yeah, you like, imagine? And then you're like, getting people to like trust it. You're like, oh, no, no, no. It's going to go in the sky like eh, a few hundred feet. Right. Imagine having neighbors who are constantly <laughs> trying to craft As they're trying to get it working. A thing that flies when you've yet to. I am imagining seeing them test it and like all the times it didn't work. Right. You're the next door neighbor and you're like, they keep just breaking stuff in their yard because they are launching it in the air. Right. That's yeah. crazy. And then it works. And then... And at that point, do you feel, I don't think that you think to yourself, wow, they really were geniuses. I You're think like, you think to yourself. Is that the devil's, that, the devil's no. machine? <laughs> no. I just, I think that my thought process would be like, I guess they were the right kind of crazy. Like they would yeah. never seem sane to me. Oh yeah. You'd never be like, I trust those guys yeah. to build a mode of transportation that I will one day use. Use in the sky. Mm-hmm. Valid, yeah. valid concern. I feel like that is a very good representation of how my brain works. Mm -hmm. You just don't just, trust people? No, 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 no. <laughs> I just think about those kinds of things a lot. Yeah. We think of now as airplanes as such a, like, it just, it makes sense to us. Yeah, they're airplanes. I think a lot of people, it doesn't make sense to them. No, I don't think that, but we accept it. Fair. That's what I mean, is nobody is questioning it on a deep level and yeah. and yet <laughs> anyway my, my brain can't wrap anything around that yeah it's just a random thought yeah that's a good one i'm Let's glad we should just bring you more random thoughts every week and we can just make this a regular you just thing start writing down the things that i say that are ludicrous yeah. i like the word ludicrous today yeah i've said it twice is that the word of the week <laughs> yeah <laughs> can you spell it l-u-d-i oh L U D I C R I S C R. No, that's that, that might be how Luda you're. <laughs> are you spelling it like Luda? Probably. Is that how he spells it? L U D A C R I S. Well, now I'm questioning myself because I've thought of how ludicrous is spelled. Oh, we're just gonna look it up. We're gonna look it up. Yeah, yeah. L U D A C R I S. It's you spell ludicrous correctly. <laughs> Just not the word that people use in the language. I just assumed that Ludacris spelled his name correctly, I guess. Just like exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anything no, new this week? No wonder I can't spell. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Have we learned anything new this week? What are we doing? Uh, 
we've learned all kinds of new things this week. Yeah. We're parenting two little humans. Yeah. One but, who is a lot and one who really is very chill. Yeah. We have another chill baby, I think, but I'm scared to say that out loud. Yeah. I just feel like putting it on a podcast is really going to jinx us, but yeah, he's been good so far. Anyway, should we actually get to our birth story and like just stop circling the planes here? Yeah. Uh, oh, that was really good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we had a second baby. <laughs> Yep, we did. <laughs> and my brain's working extra slow because in the few weeks since we've been home, I've been sleeping a lot less, and I don't do well sleep deprived. You really don't. So uh, that was one positive of exclusively pumping with G. Yeah, is like the pumping was terrible, but it did mean that I could do the night where like I can break mm-hmm. up my sleep or do I need sleep? I'm mean without it, but. I work better sleep deprived. Also, I had You're I went mean, to work. But functional. <clears throat> that was the other positive though, is I was going to a job, so I was dysfunctional at work. Yeah. I had a nice eight hours to to get into my groove in the day and come home. Mm-hmm. As opposed to now, you just have to be the guy with me in the morning, mm-hmm. who's like, mm, this guy's kind I of a jerk. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yes. Exactly. So. Uh, so we, in the last couple weeks of pregnancy, went back and forth on whether to be induced. Yeah. You didn't want to at first. Your, your goal was not to be induced. You wanted to go into labor on your own. I wanted to wait it out. And this pregnancy, I had anxiety unlike anything else I've ever really experienced. Yeah. I mean, a little bit was probably keeping it offline and like wanting to make sure we actually followed through on that. Yeah. And some of it was just kind of no, like it was almost worse that you knew what was coming. I feel like. I should clarify because it wasn't anxious the entire pregnancy. No, no, no. no. It was anxious the last two weeks leading into the birth. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the pregnancy as a whole because I felt like the pregnancy itself was very peaceful and I enjoyed it being offline. Yeah. And so whenever you tied it to, you think part of it was because it was offline. I don't know that I agree with that. No, yeah, that's I, that's fair. I feel like what you're saying, and I, I want to clarify because I want it to mm-hmm. be really clear for people. I feel like it was, I had excitement and anticipation of ready to share. I yes. don't feel like that was necessarily linked to the anxiety I was experiencing, though. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, there was uh, anticipation there. Yeah, I, I feel better. like the anxiety part just came from everything else we were, and still are kind of mm-hmm. juggling, uh, I put a lot of pressure on myself to try and control the schedule so it works for everybody. Everybody. Not just us. No. Yeah. My family, Matt's family, so that it's convenient for everybody to come visit and, and meet conven- the baby yeah. how they want to. I'm not good and at convenient to have care for Gardner and convenient. Yeah. Yeah. And I am not great at, at upholding boundaries whenever it comes to that stuff. It's not mm-hmm. that because uh, I feel like we have very, for the most part, kind family when it comes to that kind of stuff. They don't yeah. push it. If I upheld my boundaries better, I think they would very willingly yeah. respect them. But I I really struggle with it. And leading into this birth, I was nervous in and of itself because just giving birth again is nerve wracking. Even Mm -hmm. though I had a great experience with the first, I really let myself hear some nightmare stories, I think. (laughs) And that's easy to do. People will give you their nightmare stories. Yeah. People are less willing to share like, Oh, it was great. Yeah. Everybody's got like a, Oh, you wouldn't believe how bad my birth went. Well, and all kinds of people were coming to me like, Oh yeah, my first one went great, but my second was horrible. And that really freaked me out. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I was trying to control the schedule so bad. I I wanted to wait it out and I will see, we're obviously only two weeks in, so we're not at the part where I know whether we want more kids or not, Mm -hmm. but if we decide we want more, I right now in my very clear mindedness (laughs) would love to lay down a boundary of just no family, friends, anything for the last, you know, few weeks of pregnancy and no one coming to visit so sure. that I didn't put that pressure on myself of uh, yeah. 
trying to make the schedules work for everyone. No one asked me to do that. No. I want to be so that's, clear. Yeah, that's just kind of how you are. You're, you it's want, a me issue. You want to make it ideal for everybody, which sometimes Doesn't, means it's not ideal for you. That's not how it, <laughs> giving no. birth, well, I made it work like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, that's really why we chose to get induced. I was a little more uncomfortable this time, but... I would say you were quite a bit more comfortable. I think it was more the mental than anything. Yeah. Though. Well, that was the funny thing is you were really uncomfortable. And then like the Wednesday of the week where my you were four, about to be My 40-week 40, 40 appointment. Your 40-week yeah. appointment. You went in and you went, okay, I'm going to schedule it for Friday. Well, I was And planning... the moment you scheduled it, physically, you were like, I feel great again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it was 100% my mental more than anything. Oh, for sure. So uh, we went in for my 40-week appointment, which was a couple days before I was 40 weeks. Mm -hmm. And my doctor, because of my previous birth being an induction, and it was a much later induction, 41-1, uh, but it was a very successful induction. Yeah, everything went really I, smoothly. All the vitals of Rory were looking really good. Yes, so there was no hesitancy. Yes. And I went unmedicated with the induction with G. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't worried about being induced and being able to go unmedicated. Yeah. It's like, I can do that. Uh, spoiler, I ended up getting the epidural. So we'll yeah. get into that and why, because that's been one of the hottest questions online is why and which one would you choose if you did it again? And we'll, yeah. we'll get into that. Because going natural with your first and, and epidural with your second, I think is less common. Probably. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. I Who knows? But uh, I did not go in planning to get the epidural, though. No. So uh, we made the decision. We went in at uh, 4.30. Well, we got there around 4.45 a.m. Matt got a bloody nose. <laughs> oh. And so now both births <laughs> on the way to the hospital, something has happened with Matt that we've been late. And which... Birth one, I thought I had forgotten my wallet. Didn't even actually forget it. We just got halfway to the hospital, and I was like, I'm going to need my wallet. We're going to have to like pay for this thing. They're going to have to know that I'm me. I need my wallet. Turned around. I was like, I think I know where it is. Walk, walked in the house. I think used my little finder tile thing. It was in the car. And it rang in the glove box. And I was like, because I, I put it there the night before. Being so like, that he wouldn't forget it. It will be in wallet. the car. You can't forget it. Totally forgot that. Uh, so... That was stressful. Yeah. And I said on this one, I said, we are not being late this time because it. I hate being late. Mm -hmm. It is probably my number one stressor in life. And we don't go to bed early. So 445 is really uh, not ideal for us. Well, we were supposed to be there at 430. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, fair. and Matt was running slow already in the morning. Uh -huh. Well, I'd gotten 90 minutes of sleep. I don't I care. I said you, but I, you, were, I you were running much more smoothly than I was. I usually do. You yeah. just run <laughs> slow. Matt is one of the slowest people I've ever met in my entire life, and he doesn't know he's slow. It's okay. The slow's not the problem. It's that you won't acknowledge you're slow. And I never will. <laughs> <laughs> and so it just always takes you a little longer than you think it's going to to do things. Yeah. 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 I and hate that about me. Well, I don't think it's something to hate. I It doesn't really I bother do. me unless I have given you a very specific Unless time. we have to be somewhere. Right. Which well, is every time that it happens. But I don't I don't create very many obligations for us where <laughs> there is a hard time, like a hard start time. Yeah. I purposely do that. that oh, I knew from the way you said, like, <laughs> I don't. I don't do this. You're like, I actually avoid giving us a deadline because I know it's going to make me mad at you. Well, it's not that it's going to make me mad at you. It's that mm -hmm. I, it makes me so stressed. Yeah. I, I hate it. Mm -hmm. We're late every time we go home, like to see our families. We're an hour later than I tell them we'll be. And I already tell them an hour later than what you tell me. <laughs> every, every time. And we're, anyway, it's <sighs> just, it's, it's one of our things. Ouch. 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 It's one of our things. I'm not trying to diss you. But on the way to the hospital, mm -hmm. we got out the door at a reasonable time. We were only going to be a couple minutes late. Yeah. Yeah, we were. And then Matt got a bloody nose. Uh, <laughs> there was blood everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so we got in it. Tensions were high. Anxieties were high. Yeah. And my nose was bleeding. <laughs> and I was making a mess. And <laughs> I was just not a very happy camper. 
And so we got to the hospital and the biggest thing I was worried about at the hospital to start was my IV. Because the first time we were there, uh, you have weird veins or you need... They were weird that day. Yeah, you had weird veins that day and so... You got stuck too many times, and then we had to wait for the shift change for them to do your IV. Yeah, they, they used a different needle, and it I was worked out bruised fine. like crazy. Yeah, you had you had rough looking arms that first go around. Yeah, it was not that big of a deal. I felt worse for the nurses than I did for um, yeah. me. <laughs> but we uh, got through it, and this time they got me first stick, which was great. Right off the bat. They started me on Pitocin around 6.15, mm-hmm. so we got started a lot earlier this time. You were dilated like between a one, one and a and two, a right? One and a two, yeah, Just and I was about barely. 70% of face yeah. uh, going into things, mm-hmm. and they got me started. They decided to break my water around 9.45, Yep. and once my water broke, that's when contractions started to kind of pick up, but... And the first go around, when you got your water broken, you were right about a five- No. Four. Four. We were at a four. And it was an hour and 45 minutes, and then it was pushing time. Like, it was rapid fire, I thought. No? You're really close. Okay. She was here in an hour 45. Okay. I went from a four. Oh, yeah, she was born. I went from a four to a 10 in an hour, and then Mm -hmm. I pushed for 45 minutes. Yeah. So, I, I just... It's not that it was. It was rapid fire. Yes. As soon as your water broke. So, when they came in to break your water... You were about a three, mm-hmm. and we were braced for like, okay. I was ready this for my happens, contractions to pick up really hard, and, and they didn't. Yeah, and and always I think a lot of what you were reading and what people say is your second time is faster. Yes. And so we were braced for like, this could be 30 minutes, and it could be really, really fast and intense. Yeah, and my doctor, my doula, everybody mm-hmm. had kind of, they, they didn't say that's what's going to happen. No. They had said, be prepared for that or the other because, yeah. and I was like, okay. Um, and my contractions picked up after they broke my water, but not like I expected them to. And I labored for almost four hours. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, for four hours. Because at one forty-five, I looked at Matt and I was handling... That's exactly what I was going to say. You were doing really well. The first go around, they were kind of wearing on you. I remember the contractions, especially early, and you don't know how long you're going to be there, and there's just this kind of feeling of, I I can do this for now, but how long do we are we going to be here? How long is this going to happen? You weren't progressing quickly early, and you'd progressed more this time in a shorter amount of time, so the feeling was like, wow, we're, we're really moving. Right, the very beginning, I went from a one to a three. But that's Whereas way better than it went last time. The first time. time around, I they I labored for four hours before they broke my water, uh-huh. and I didn't progress at all. I was still a one. At yeah. The end of the four hours, yeah. Yeah. So, again, we were like, you're you're handling it better. You're feeling better. The contractions aren't like wrecking you. Uh, they were intense for sure, but you were braced more for like what it was going to feel like Mm -hmm. and you were just doing really well yeah is what i i I felt yes uh and i looked at matt at (laughs) around 145 and i said i need the epidural and the way you looked Uh at your expression back at me was hilarious because you didn't know what to say to me (laughs) no and i remember that because the first the first go around with g you were like i need you to support my decision to go unmedicated I don't need an out. I need you to be, hey, encouraged. This is the plan. You can do this. You've got this. And so that's exactly what I tried to do this go around. And we'd already done it once before, and you'd been going really well for four hours. So it, my thought was, okay, yeah, we're we're gonna be in really good shape. We're gonna be really close. We'll probably be at like a seven, maybe an eight. So we're gonna be right. She's about to transition. It's about to be transition, so it'll get. Really intense, but then it'll be pushing time. So this baby's going to be here, I'm sure, soon. Yeah. And you went, I think I need the epidural. I don't think I'm progressing at all. My body is just fighting everything it needs to do. And like, you know, I don't you, know to argue, you know. Both you and our doula looked at me like I was. Well, we, we were just like, no, you got this. You've yeah. been doing so good. Yeah. And I just knew <laughs> my body felt completely different than it did uh-huh. with G. 
I wasn't relaxing into what was happening. Yeah. That anxiety that I carried those last couple of weeks, I was still carrying with me mm-hmm. really heavily. I was trying to control the situation in a way that I don't think I did the first time. Well, you had you didn't have the knowledge. Yeah. You you'd done this once before and so I think you were more you had a you had more of a mental image of what it was going to look like. Yeah. And so I, we made the decision together, you, me, and the doula, to have the nurse come in and check me. I hadn't been checked since they broke my water. Yeah. The doula and I were like, well, let's, uh, for, right. for sure us, because you were automatically like, epidural me. Yeah. You were like, yeah, you can check, but well, I, I, I want the epidural. I knew in my like gut, I knew yeah. how stalled I was uh-huh. and nothing was happening. And you guys, the thing is, if they'd come in and been like, you're at a six, you're at a seven, mm-hmm. I would have been like, oh, let's keep going. Yeah. We're, we're uh, just I'm right fine. by transition. Yeah. Because it wasn't a, a pain no. issue. It was a, my body is not relaxing. So anyway, the nurse yeah. comes in to check me and I'm still at a three. Yeah. I have not progressed a bit in the. Started at a three at 945. Here we are, half past one, still at a three. And so both the duel and I were like, Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I guess I don't know why we doubted you, but yeah. you, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, and so they called in the epidural for mm-hmm. me. That got placed around 2.30. Yeah. And uh, it took about a half hour to get it uh, in on both sides. Yeah, they're they're placing it. There's a whole procedure they go through. and Yeah, it was interesting, actually, yeah, because I had not done that much research into epidurals because no. I just wasn't going to get one. Uh-uh. Uh, but to me, it was a great tool in this situation because I knew my body wasn't relaxing. So by two forty-five to three, uh, epidural was fully, Mm -hmm. I was fully numb and comfortable. Uh, they checked me just shy of four Yeah, and I was at an eight. Yep. And (laughs) I think fully effaced, uh, and fully effaced. And I called the nurse in maybe five to 10 minutes after that. Mm -hmm. And I said, can you check me one more time? And she was like, do you think that you're, and I said, yeah, I think I'm done. Ready. And she checked me and I, I was done. <laughs> I was complete. And so that was around four Oh, I don't know, four, 10, four, five, it was a little after four, four 10. Yeah. Uh, whenever I was at a 10. So it took an hour and 20 minutes after I got the epidural, less than an hour and a half yeah. after epidural, you went from a three to a 10, like, and so it's pushing time. I was really confident after that, that mm-hmm. it was in fact me not being able to relax that was causing my labor to stall so much. Mm-hmm. And so I think that if I were to have the opportunity to give birth again, I would go unmedicated again. Mm-hmm. I really loved my unmedicated experience, but in this circumstance, I was so stalled and my mental fortitude was not there in order to make my body relax. Yeah. I was going to ask if, if you could do one or the other, well, I guess we haven't gotten through actually pushing the baby out. Yeah. I'd go unmedicated again. Yeah. I'd go unmedicated again in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. If the experience was that of my first birth experience, if things went the way that, my second went, I would get the epidural again in a heartbeat. You wouldn't really have an option. You'd still be at a three. Right. And so I, I think the lesson learned is listen to your body and listen to what feels right to you because there are some women who get the epidural and it stalls their labor and it goes slower for them with the epidural. There, You know, there, there's a million different ways to experience it. Yeah. And so really tuning in and listening to your body and it's what I did and – the epidural was great. I was really nervous after getting the epidural, though, because was I going to tear this time? Yeah. Was I going to have uh, damage I didn't have my first go around because I couldn't feel things the way I could when giving birth unmedicated? And that that made me nervous. Uh, and so we got to the – well, so – I'm complete at 410 or whatever. My doctor was not at the hospital. She was on call. Yep. She was. I don't even know that she was on call. No. I I think that she was just in town. 
Gotcha. Uh, so I, she was like, I'll be available if you need yeah, me. Yeah. She said, I'll, I'll, I'll make my way back up to the hospital. But she was leaving town at 6 p.m. because her daughter had a volleyball yeah, tournament. Yeah. She, she had to leave at 6. She had a hard out. Yeah. And we knew that even when we scheduled an induction. We scheduled yes. an induction because she's like, I'm going to be out of town this weekend. But I But love I can do Friday. My doctor. Yeah. And I wanted her to be there. It was okay if it didn't go that mm-hmm. way. But I trust everybody on their team. But I really love my doctor. I wanted her to be there. So uh, at 4.10, the nurse texted my doctor and said, hey, she's complete and ready. And my doctor texted back and said, have her do a practice, like a couple practice pushes. I'll be up there the moment <laughs> I drop the girls off. So, you know, I- I'm 35 yeah. minutes out or whatever. Yeah. And the nurse got me all set up and had me do one practice push. I don't really know what that was like. I didn't see anybody's faces. You did. Yeah. So she's down there. She's got your legs in the stirrups. She goes, <laughs> okay. Do a practice push. I mean, whatever. Three, two, they're, one, whatever. Know, they're telling you to push down with, especially since you have the epidural. We hadn't, they were trying to make sure you kind of knew how to push yeah. with the epidural. They have you do one practice push. The nurse goes, okay, we're going to wait for the doctor. So yeah, just don't practice push anymore. And we sat there for a second and she said, yeah, I remember oh. making the joke. I was like, oh, do you not want to deliver this baby right now? And she's like, no, no, I don't. I would like the doctor to be here. <laughs> and she's like, put your legs down. We're going to get them down. And don't need those up in the stirrups. And so it was It was very clear that it was ready yeah. to push. Yeah. Uh, my doctor walked in around 445. Mm-hmm. They got her all ready to go. At 557, they got me set back up to start pushing again. And 457. I keep saying 557. Yeah. Sorry. 457. And uh, baby got here right at 5 p.m. Time of birth is 5 p.m. Sharp. Yeah. Uh, And that was a relief because pushing, I had a shorter pushing experience compared to most first time moms at 45 minutes with the first. Yeah, that's fast. But pushing out a baby is like one of the most intense experiences I think I've ever had Uh, with the first. It could not have been two more different experiences either because unmedicated, 45 minutes which First was fast, mom. and you were pushing hard. Mm-hmm. You were like, "I'm gonna shoot this baby out." <laughs> I was so this ready to be flying done. out. Yeah, and you weren't even totally in control. I remember you were. The, the nurses were worried because you were at a nine. I think that's just after seeing. Well, it was similar in this process because I was say, it happened to me again this time. It I, was almost identical. I think your ten is just a nine with a lip. Yeah, and so. I don't even. I don't even know what they're talking about or looking at. I don't either, and I don't want to know. It's it's not important, but. <laughs> It's same situation here. Didn't affect anything, but they the nurses were the first time like eh, I don't. We need to get the doctor. You're not really at a ten, mm-hmm. and the doctor's like, well, looks like she's going past it. I think it's mm-hmm. gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. But you're you went. Hey, I'm pushing. Like there's no discussion here. I'm not trying or not trying to push. No, my body. My just body did is it. pushing. Mm-hmm. My body is is removing this baby. Mm-hmm. It's go time. Yeah. Uh, and this time it was just so quick. I was so confused. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? We're done? Totally different environment. The the first one, super intense. You were like ripping the bed rails off of the bed. <laughs> you were, your head down. Ooh, the noises. This intense. time there was no noise. No, this time it was two minutes long. It was, it was two wild. minutes long. There was, Chill. I was just breathing. It was almost too quiet in there. Mm-hmm. Just sitting, hanging out, talking to people, talking with the nurse, talking with the doctor. And it's you're funny. seeing so much more too because you're my, just looking at you're like, well, there's the business. The first to go around, I was like locked in on you, your well, face. You were on, we were like eye to eye. She was in the bed and I was I was mainly just worried that my wife was going to die because it was, she was screaming. <laughs> I, was, I was nowhere near death. You no, guys. you weren't. But the baby, I was like, I don't know that baby. I do know my wife. I'm going to need her for this. I, I need you. <laughs> Please don't leave me. Please be okay. And this go around, just You chilling. saying I don't know that baby at all is, <laughs> it gets me every single time. That's how I felt. It was like, hey, you're a stranger. I, I love you inherently. I'm going to love you. I'm going to learn who you are. I don't know who you are right now. That's you a stranger have lots down of there. nurses around you. Yeah. There are like five people trying to take care of this baby. Uh, it's just me and kind of the doula taking care of you. And the doctor. The doctor. But the doctor's there. looking at the baby also. They, yeah. they, they get in, they're making sure 
the blood stops and they've got a process down there. Yeah. I was worried about your your head. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, the thing I was going to note is the doctor said, who's letting us know the sex of the baby? Mm -hmm. Because we don't find out if we're having a boy or a girl. And Matt was like, "That's we have it recorded. You know? Yeah. Matt's like, oh, that's me. And then they... Uh, he comes out and you go, oh, it's a boy. And neither of us even react. No. Everybody's like, can we see your reaction? Do you guys finding out it's a boy? And Matt's like, it's a boy. And then the doctor goes, you were right. Because I uh -huh. said I thought it was a boy. And I, I don't do or say or acknowledge yeah. it at all. I'm like, great. Well, it was just so fast. I don't think we were mentally prepared for a baby to just <laughs> pop out of there. No. And we were just looking at the process. Yeah. Mind's so, blown. The epidural was a totally different experience. Yeah. Completely different. But I really, I enjoyed my unmedicated experience. Mm -hmm. I really did. And anybody that wants to go unmedicated, heck yes. Yeah. I think the biggest thing that I would recommend after my epidural experience is making sure that you are low stress and that the people around you, your family, your friends, those that you choose to include are on board with keeping your life low stress when that stress and anxiety can be part of what plays into not going into labor on your own if your body's right. not feeling safe to have a baby in an environment or feeling too pressured to have a baby in a certain environment it can slow things down your body responds to your stress and tries to protect you and protect your child right yeah so it was really good though mm-hmm we, uh, our postpartum experience was good. Oh, and to, I guess, give the final roundup on my fears with the epidural, mm -hmm. I didn't have any tearing. Yeah. Again. Uh, so. How's your recovery been in general compared to the first go around? Good. Really different, though. Okay. I feel like my entire experience has been really different. Uh, one being that breastfeeding is going a lot better. I was not able to nurse with our daughter. I tried. <laughs> I tried yeah. for a you, long time. You tried for and it, what, six weeks? Six weeks. I tried and we had to supplement. Like I had to pump so we could not supplement with formula, but mm -hmm. not that there was anything wrong with supplementing with formula. No, that was, that was the backup plan if pumping didn't go well. A hundred percent. Uh, but I was able to pump and but it just, it did not. Yeah. I have major oversupply issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I had it with my first with barely any pumping. And all we're doing is nursing this time. And it is, again, it's not been a problem yet. He's handling it like a champ. But there's definitely, definitely plenty of supply. <laughs> yeah. He's gaining weight like an absolute hoss. <laughs> He's a little unit. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see. Hopefully that's going to start regulating. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, that has just been an issue of mine, but nursing has gone a lot better, which is a huge difference. But, and I think that's helped my mental through these first two weeks, but my body wise, I feel like I felt better in some ways. Like I feel like in general, my actual like outer body hurt a lot more the first go around like mm -hmm. my muscles and all this stuff hurt in a different way this time I don't feel like I hurt quite as bad but I feel like I could really feel my insides okay like I could feel my uterus in a way that I couldn't as badly the first time that sounds horrible I well and the thing is I don't know if I couldn't feel it the first time mm -hmm. or if the other aches and pains just the physical kind of masked it was the, the more immediate pain. Yes. Also, the uterus is a weird yeah. organ and in general. I had really bad postpartum cramping with G, and I also had really bad postpartum cramping mm -hmm. this time, too. That's the worst part, in my yeah. opinion. It's horrible. <laughs> and I think this time I also way overdid it the first week. Oh, you were on your feet way too much. We, we, had, were, we had people in town. We had tons you were just of doing family in town, much. which was great. I love seeing everybody. I love that everybody got to come and meet him. Mm -hmm. uh, but... I just was on my feet way too much. And G wanted me to hold her. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to tell your 20-month-old. Who's to, missed you for the last two days. Yeah. Wants to jump into your arms. Yeah. That that was... And so I kept picking her up, and I shouldn't have. <laughs> no. And 
yeah, I, I think all in all, it's gone really well. I, I'm feeling pretty good, but it's just been different. Yeah. You you were lucky enough not to tear either time. Yeah. So you didn't and have I a think lot that of physical makes a world. Well, yeah, like it's night and day. I don't even think that I can speak to what postpartum is for a lot of women because of that. I have my own experiences. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but, uh, I know that that's such a hurdle for so many people mm -hmm. and it's not for me. No, your, your physical recovery both times has been really, yeah, really strong. Yeah. So, uh, but it's been a crazy couple of weeks. I am two weeks into exclusively nursing. Mm -hmm. We've not done any bottle or anything like that. No. So I think that's something that I'm really proud of. Not so much because I think there's a right way to do it or anything like that, but just knowing all of that time and effort that's gone into mm -hmm. things. And I'm, I'm really proud of how that's going. And we had our two week doctor's appointment and weight gain was good. Yep. And I am just feeling really at peace about that experience. And I've been asked a lot, what did you, what did you do differently this time? And I'd like any mom to know that had a horrible time with nursing with their first, I did nothing differently. No, he's, it, it just has worked better. He's just a different baby. Yeah. And I wish that I knew what I know now the first time because I was so hard on myself. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had failed or that I was doing something wrong or maybe I didn't try hard enough or maybe I gave up on it too soon. And I, I don't think that was the case. I think it was that hard. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a mom, so I don't have any authority to speak on it, but I, I can imagine that's really stressful knowing that you are supposed to be the food source or wanting to be the food source and not knowing or or knowing that you're not providing enough right. or not providing in the way you want to. Right. Which and oversupply you were, you're providing was able enough. To pump. I, I was able to pump. Um, but, but the... anybody that's pumped, oh, <laughs> it's a, yeah. an exclusively pumping mom to me is, I mean, nursing is also, an incredibly difficult thing. So is formula feeding with bottles uh, and everything you have to do. I, I've said this again and again. Feeding a kid is yes. is a is a job. I think it's something that we don't prepare people for is feeding your child regardless of how you choose or what chooses you is taxing and exhausting mentally, emotionally, and there are so many opinions mm -hmm. and everybody has something to say about it. If you choose to nurse, it's where you can nurse and how you nurse and, you know, X, Y, Z. and Watch out it, for this. This can happen to you. This can happen. Yeah. If you exclusively pump, there's a whole bit about that. Well, they're not they're not getting contact and they're not getting this positive aspect. And right. you might as well do this. And how are you handling? Yeah. And if you formula feed, people are like, well, why <laughs> well, didn't doesn't have, you? you yeah. Know? It's just there's no winning. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no winning. No. And I think that's something I really had to accept. And this time around is just going really well. Yeah, that's been really nice. I didn't do anything differently, though. No. I just want to be so clear on that. You are getting less sleep because A when you were sleep. exclusively pumping, we could take shifts. Mm -hmm. So I could do the first night feed and you could do the second night feed. I dropped my middle yeah. of the night pump um Almost yeah. immediately, yeah. which I know is not an option for a lot of moms no. who are exclusively pumping. Uh, but like I said, I was trying to work down that oversupply mm -hmm. and I dropped my middle of the night at maybe two weeks. Yeah, I, I yeah. was. Uh, so I was sleeping in a six hour stretch. Yeah. With uh, the shifts because yes. the bottles and all that. Yeah. Very quickly. And uh, yeah, it was a whole different. This is a whole different ball game. I'm Completely. waking up every two hours mm -hmm. and it's not even getting to sleep for two hours though because he eats every two hours and then you have to spend 15 to 30 minutes feeding so really you only sleep for like an hour and a half yeah and there might it's, be a diaper change in there too yeah so yeah i'm <laughs> tired i'm tired but i'm functioning yeah. i don't i don't You're feel doing horrible well. um it's just my focus right now is feeding him mm -hmm. so and uh, and it gets better. 
has gone really well is G's adjusting great. She's she's in love with her brother. She's handled it like a total champ. Mm-hmm. I was extremely nervous about that. I didn't know what the transition to two was going to feel like. Uh, I mean, you worry about everything. You're yeah. Like, how can I love this thing as much as I love, <laughs> you know, this first one? Yeah. And it somehow works, and which everybody tells you. Uh, yeah. But it's true. And yeah. She just wants to kiss him all the yeah, time. Yeah, she does. That's like her whole thing. Yeah. She uh, sees the baby kiss the baby. Mwah. Yeah. Mwah. And uh, she's been so good with him. Yeah. And she's really handled it well. It hasn't messed up her schedule or sleep. That was the big fear is we're going to get a baby and all of a sudden she's going to really regress hard and not sleep through the night and not. And do all the things she's been really good at. We made some intentional decisions around that. We didn't yeah. change anything about her routine in the month leading up to mm-hmm. or anything in these first couple of weeks. We're going to still give it a couple more weeks. Well, and we tried to really establish a good routine because mm-hmm. she'd been such a good sleeper. Our routine was, was not loose. that strong. It, it was, was loose. We, we really went off of her signals, which we still do to a degree, but we have a routine more around, you know, bath and... right. If we watch something or read a book or whatever that looks like for sure uh yeah and so it's really it's been good yeah yeah it's been really really sweet to watch her uh just love her brother so much yeah. she's and now when she plays she plays babies all the time babies are we have a real baby and then when she's not with the real baby she wants to play babies so really cute really really cute and uh, i wanted to note before we move on to Greg's Reads of the Week yeah, and Word of the Week. Uh, I think next week is going to kind of be our wrap-up to the <laughs> uh, We Had a Baby Month yeah. <laughs> of podcast episodes. Uh, but next week, we want to do an open Q&A from you guys, answering anything sure. that you want in more detail or more specific. And so we'll put a question box up on Matt's story. Sure. Uh, you can also leave a voicemail or email us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'd love to hear from you. And I think you actually have an email today. Yeah, yeah we have an email we'll get to Yeah, after later. we do Reads of the Week. You want to yeah. go ahead and get started there? Sure, Reads of the Week. Greg's Reads of the Week. We're going to actually try and intro it because we always forget to intro it. Greg is your dad. Yes. And this segment is... All the articles that he sends us in a given week. Yes. And like many people's parents, Greg reads a lot of news. He wants his kids to be informed. So he sends us that news. And, and so we rate them on a one to five. Since we started doing this, he is much more <laughs> nervous about sending us articles. And I wish he wasn't because I really do. I mm-hmm. really enjoy the articles yeah. he sends us. And it's, I it's don't, good insight into... I don't care if it gives me anxiety. I yeah. think it's healthy. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably a little nervous because we do a podcast now and point him out every week as well so yeah so sorry dad maybe his we... more controversial topics he keeps holstered yeah i don't even know what that would be <laughs> no, i'm like either. really curious now but all right no. you go ahead what you read we rate it one to five anxiety yes how much anxiety it gives us yes and so hopefully Lately, you can it's relate. been like zeros and ones across it's the been board. very light very yeah. light our food may be giving us alzheimer's disease new research says market watch so uh, this doesn't give me anxiety interesting okay do you know why? Why? Because I just assume our food is killing us. <laughs> I really do. Fair. And and I don't. You're even, like I'm lucky to eat anything. I don't so. even try. I had Reese's eggs today. If yeah. you think that's not the food killing you, I mean that's for sure. It's has not. To be it's not helping you. No. Not you know nothing against Reese's eggs. They're delicious. Yeah. But they're not. For they're for sure not sustaining life. No. Yeah. No, and so, so I think that that's why it's like I've already quit on that in my head. Gotcha. You're just happy to get calories in. Right. And so I think it should concern me. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say this one you? gave me more in a three range. Okay. Of, But Did I didn't you read, read it. it. No, no. <laughs> uh, recurring theme here, I don't read the articles very often. I usually read them, but I've not been mm-hmm. doing a good job because I've been trying to stay off my phone as much as I can. We've also been busy. We've been really absorbed mm-hmm. in baby. Yeah. And I've been trying to do better with my screen time. Yeah. Sure. Cause I feel like screen time makes me anxious in general. Yeah. I don't want Alzheimer's disease, but uh, uh you know, again, we're we're just trying to survive in the food category. We're not we're not doing a great job of making healthy choices. Big facts. We're just trying to make effective choices. Yes. Article number two. Here's why rejection is actually good for your brain, according to a psychologist, CNBC. Hmm. I didn't read this one. This one was interesting. I didn't read it, but I thought about it. (laughs) 
Then it, I was like, I don't, I hate rejection. It, I, it, I honestly haven't seen very many of the articles that have come mm-hmm. through because I haven't, again, haven't been checking my phone. Yeah. So when I check it, there's like 42 unread texts because everybody's been talking back and, and you're forth. not a like, I'm going to go back 42 texts. I don't go back and read unless something is serious yeah. that I need to. Yeah. I'm mortally afraid of rejection, so it might be good for my brain. There's a lot of things that are good for my brain that I don't do. So Yeah. That one gives me a little more anxiety. Sure. Like a two. I, I two. Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay. I could give it a two as well. Okay. Five ways to declutter your life for, in time for spring without regretting it later. Stylist. I didn't read this because I didn't see it until mm-hmm. we looked up these articles. Okay. This is totally the kind of article I would read. I wish dad sent me more articles like Fun this. Fun articles just like. Well, to me, this is helpful. Okay. I, I read things out of those and it's very helpful to me. Okay. Usually. Cool. Because normally it like gives me a couple different methods of, you know, like turn all your hangers backwards. Oh, is that a real tip? Yeah. People say that all the time. Like if you're looking to declutter your closet at the beginning of the year, hang all your hangers backwards. And then at the end of the season, anything that season that the hangers still backwards, oh, get rid of it. Oh, that is a good trick. Yeah. Good trick. Yeah. But I feel like those are the kinds of tips you get out of articles like that. And I find that kind of information very useful. A little life hack. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So no no anxiety? No anxiety, but it's stoked about it. Would like more articles like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't get a lot of anxiety. Maybe a one. Okay. Just a little. Because decluttering. Like, cool. Just another thing I need to do. Yeah. Love big it. facts. Yeah. What's our word of the week? Word of the week. You familiar with the word platitude? No. What a platitude is. No, but I like it because to me that works in my brain sure. and it's very pronounceable and it's also very uh, like memorable. Got platitude. it. Platitude. Platitude. Yeah. It's a remark or statement, especially one with a moral content that has been used too often to be interesting or thoughtful. A so moral kind of like content? A, a moral, like with moral. A, a moral. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Got with, it. So like an example would be like every cloud has a silver lining. Okay. A lot of times they're like cliches that have that get kind of overused, so, so they kind of lose their meaning. Is it a? N- yeah, it's like a, a negative. Noun? It's a noun. Okay. Yeah. So a platitude is a noun. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out. Is is it? Yeah. Like a, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. It'll. It, you know. It is what it is. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's really more of a platitude. It's not very effective. Got it. Advice or thoughtful. Got it. At this point, got it's it, true. Got it. Most of the time, they're true. Fed is best. Yes, sure. That's a platitude. Exactly. Okay. It's like, yeah. True. But like, not necessarily can we take helpful. in the nuances of my situation and actually discuss sure. it and support me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Platitude. Platitude. Word of the week. I like that. Great. Voicemails? Oh, yeah. That's me. Well, we can do, I can read the email. Oh, let's go email. We did get an email. So we let's have an email, email address first. you can hit us up at. Okay. Email from Abby. Since you spend a lot of time on social media for work, and I'm sure just browsing as well, what is your standpoint on screen time for your daughter, and how do you feel about having social media in the future? Her having social media in the future. So, fun fact about Matt and I. Uh Uh-huh. You can tell me what you think of this. We actually don't scroll that much. No, no. I'm actually, like, I should scroll more. Uh, So should I. So that I post more and know what's going on. Yeah, we don't take in that much content. Uh... Mm -hmm. Because we spend so much time, I think, or at least I do, I don't feel like you do as much. No, That's not a big I'm, phone guy. I'm not, a, I'm not uh, a good social media guy in general. Yeah, I spend so much time editing, filming, you know, mm-hmm. doing all of that on my phone. I don't scroll that much. And I, I really do kind of a poor job of keeping up with friends on social media. Yeah. I don't watch that many stories. I just don't take in that much we content. don't use it the way a lot of people use it, which is to keep up and be entertained. But I mean, like my for you page on TikTok is hilarious. Yeah. But it's not informative in the same way that people use it to keep up with things yeah. and people. And how I want that to translate to G, I, I think that I don't have a, a strict structure. I'm not mm-hmm. like no more than this much or X, Y, Z. Yeah. I think one thing I know I want to do is I want phones outside of the bedrooms. Sure. When they're older, like, you know, once they're old enough to have phones, I want them to charge outside of the rooms. Yeah. Because I want to keep really good sleep schedules because that's something you and I have done. We don't do 
phones as much at night anymore. No. They go on the chargers and it it's just a better sleep routine to not have your phone in bed. Yeah. And uh, so I, I know that's one thing I know I want to establish that's like a hard and fast. Sure. Um, and she's she's not even two. So. Right. We we like to reserve well, the right to amend any of this as time goes on and we get but struck with reality. But beyond that, I don't really have a lot of things because to me it has a big. Again, there's so much nuance there because what are her interests? Yeah. What if she's really into coding? Mm hmm. And that's something she's passionate about. And so she spends all kinds of time on the computer coding and working on yeah. stuff. And that's her passion. Well, there's a ton of really good resources for a lot of informative habits and stuff on these social medias. Well, so it's just how are you using it? And right. how are you are you giving your kid the tool to recognize that social media is not reality? Social media is the best 0.1% of people's lives that gets reflected out. Are they are they recognizing that advertising is advertising and mm -hmm. all that stuff? A, a lot of it is so much to do with are you giving your kid the tools to handle life? Right. Not necessarily are you protecting them from life? And, and that's think, something we really want to focus on as we raise our kids. I think that's more the social media bit versus the screen time bit. Mm -hmm. But because I, like, I was talking about just screen gotcha. time in general. Okay. Because I know that, like, whenever I was a kid, I think about my parents had a limit on how much TV I could watch because yeah. mm -hmm. they didn't want me to have a ton of screen time. Yeah. And I don't know that we'll have a hard and fast. It's just the reason I explain, you know, what if she's really into mm -hmm. that coding is my example. Sure. Is I have a nephew that's really into video games and really into computers and how they work. And so he automatically spends more time looking at a screen yeah. than my niece does but it's not because of unhealthy things sure. so i think that's where i have to take into consideration with screen time sure social media i'm not even worrying about that yet yeah because it's going to change and evolve like think True. about how social media was 10 years ago mm -hmm. instagram was hardly a thing i mean it, it was yeah. a thing but not how it is now uh, I mean, when we were kids, MySpace was the thing. Right. And that's just in the last... So she's not even two yet. So in 10 years, what's it going to be? And so I don't... We don't know. I, I think we'll that, be too old to know. Well, I think everything <laughs> you just said is the relevant stuff. Yeah. I, I think making sure that they understand healthy habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... And I guess my thoughts on screen time, more specifically screen time, is as long as they're engaged with the world and it's not affecting relationships or experiences mm -hmm. or social capability which sometimes is not even related to screen time as long as you can't correlate it to hey this is causing us issues when we're in public or this is causing us like if it's not causing a problem i don't know that we're going to rush to cut it off mm -hmm. you know kind of address the problems as they come well i don't necessarily believe that screen time is directly linked to yeah problem yeah we there, there's studies that kind of go both ways on it so yeah like anything else it's like coffee you know coffee's good for you coffee's bad for you wine's, wine's good, good for you, for you. Wine's, wine's bad, bad for, for you. you chocolate all that stuff it's it just really depends all on, about how you're utilizing it uh-huh how much when who that are you how's your body helpful. work no yep. all right <laughs> tbd we don't know uh let's look at voicemail let's do it Hi, Matt. Hi, Joe. My name is Sophie, and I'm from Argentina. I know Joe likes people from all over the yes. world listening. We do. But right now, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I've been following you guys for a while. I have a son who's the same age as Gardy. So I started following you guys when you were pregnant with her. And I was very surprised about the second baby, like everyone on the internet. But I'm very happy for you guys. Congratulations. And we are currently in the process of thinking about baby number two and we just had a chemical pregnancy too. So I was wondering if you guys had any advice on managing anxiety when doing this the second time, because my first baby, I got pregnant super fast, no issues, first try, first month. Um, and since it's your first, you really don't think about everything that can go wrong. Like what you said in the last episode, I think. But with the second, I am more conscious of everything that can go wrong with the pregnancy and with the baby and all that. 
So I was just wondering if you have any advice how you manage your anxiety, Joe, because I am driving my soul crazy and I just want to relax and I can't. Um, love you guys. Thank you. And congratulations again. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And yes, I do get really excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, when people are from anywhere in the country, like the fact that anybody yeah, Arkansas outside blows my of mind. like our neighbors listen and to us. Then when somebody's from anyway, you hear yeah. me every time get excited. Um, <laughs> but thank you for listening. We're glad that you're here and really sorry to hear that you're having to work through and process the feelings that come after a chemical pregnancy yeah. and having that experience in general. Uh, it's heavy and it's hard and it's, uh, it really does. It, I think takes away some of the joy and excitement of the beginning part or can. Yeah. I've seen it go both ways mm -hmm. where some people take it as we're going to celebrate really early because if we only get to celebrate, you know, a little bit, we want this child to have been celebrated. I think you can take it both directions. Yeah. For me, I became very shelt like very guarded. Guarded. Yeah, that's a good word. Sheltered is what came to mind. I was like, I don't think that's right. Very guarded and uh hesitant. Uh huh. I think my best advice is take it one day at a time. Get outside. Yeah. Uh get off of your phone and devices is always my number one thing because I feel like the more time I sit and I look at a screen, whether it's playing a game or watching a show, the less I move my body, the more I am in my head. Yeah. And so I try to really limit my screen time, get outside, go on walks, uh, be active in some kind of way. Not necessarily you need to go work out or anything like that. You can, if you like to work mm -hmm. out and that's something you do get out, work out. Uh, but even going on a walk with a friend or reading a book outside, it's also February right now. Don't know what the weather's like. Um, uh, but I, that's my best advice, but I, I don't know that there's curing it. I don't know that there is a solution that leaves you anxiety free in that situation. So I, th I think it's really taking it one day at a time and making sure that you're vocalizing those feelings and letting them out. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably really one of the best things you can do is, is process it. And if you need to process it verbally, process it with somebody, you can do that verbally. If you need to process it internally, take the time and give yourself the space to do it internally. But journal, um, if you like, yeah, there's nothing less helpful useful. than like you know well don't stress about it because stress makes everything worse it's like well if i couldn't you know if i could not stress about it i wouldn't but yeah. clearly i'm not in control of that and you know we were that way we got pregnant immediately yeah. with g mm -hmm. and uh, you know i think that's where i feel a little underqualified to provide advice in this situation is we had a chemical pregnancy and we had so much going on or about to be going on yeah. when that happened mm -hmm. We had a trip to the beach, and then from the trip to the beach, we were moving, and then, you know, like... I mean, yeah, and, and then, so I guess to we a degree, were, stay busy, too. I know, guess that can yeah. be advice. Yeah. Now, that can also prevent you from processing, so um, I don't it depends on who you are. that I had a lot of space to... Process. Process. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that was good or bad. And we still don't. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have even more going on now than we ever have, so... Yeah. Um, but I, I really would say, yeah, get outside, move your body. Yeah, process what you need to, and even if it's cold, dress warm, mm -hmm. get outside, move your body. Yeah, and just give yourself uh, space, space, room, emotional space. Love yourself, <laughs> love yourself. That's what I have to tell myself Ooh. often. Yeah, don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. Hi, Matt and Joe. It's Sarah from Down Under. Um, first say. of all, huge congrats on the new addition to your family. So excited. Literally made me so happy. Um, I am on a walk right now. So if you hear any noises in the background, it's probably something dangerous. That's going to kill me. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but love listening to your podcast. I do have a question though. Full context um, and apologies. I haven't been able to catch up on all episodes yet. So you might have already addressed this. But we'd love to hear a bit more perspective from you guys on how you manage communication and understanding 
when one of you is neurodivergent, um, like keeping in mind, you know, situations and conversations um, with that in the back of your mind, I guess. Anyway, probably should get back to a fast paced walk where I'm not breathless, <laughs> but hope you have an amazing day and huge congratulations again. Hi, Sarah. Hi. You did a great <laughs> job. It was not too breathy. They did have a little nice ambiance in the background, but I nothing thought it was distracting. Beautiful ambience. Yeah. It, uh-huh. it like there were birds and it was yeah. quite lovely. Uh, they're in a much nicer season over there, so yeah, they it are. sounded lovely. We gotta go visit. <laughs> Sarah, we're gonna come visit you. It's gonna happen. Uh, okay. How we handle neurodivergent versus neurotypical. Yeah. This is interesting. I think we're very much probably always gonna be figuring it out mm-hmm. within some capacity some of its practice and like years and years and years of practice and years and years and years of just realizing we do everything completely opposite and i don't know whose perspective you want to hear it from you know if you're the neurotypical person who's like how do you deal with this neurodivergent crazy or if you're the neurodivergent um, person who's like, how do you deal with this neurotypical crazy? Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to give it from my perspective first. Sure. I am neurotypical. Yep. Matt is our neurospicy half. <laughs> uh, and for me, I really try to take into consideration the things that I truly know about you. Uh-huh. So what are things that I know are not within his control for instance being slow getting ready which we talked on earlier is why i bring it up yeah not to harp on you time is not real to me he really struggles with understanding how much time has passed Mm -hmm. and so i work really hard kind of like you heard me speak on earlier it doesn't mean i don't get frustrated sometimes when we're late but i work really hard in our day-to-day to create environments where we don't have hard arrival times because of that. And that's a way that I can create space for his neurodivergence um, without, you know, setting myself up to be frustrated with you. You every try single to plan time. around it. I yeah. Guess. Uh, and so I would say that's huge. I think communication, 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 which drives Matt a little bonkers, I think. Yes. But, right. I ask a lot of pointed questions and I really try to understand the why of uh, choices that you're making. Maybe more so than even you understand the why of choices you're making. Probably. But it helps me understand the intention versus the impact. Sure. Well, I think to, to just touch on that quickly, it's always important to, regardless of neurodivergent or not, Um, understand that your partner is probably not making a choice with a negative intent towards you. Yes. Rarely. And if they are, that's a whole different issue. We talk about that a lot. But most of the time, they're not making a choice to hurt you. It might hurt you because of a choice they made for themselves or for some other external reason, but it isn't intended to Doesn't make it okay. No, that's not an excuse. No. But it can help you kind of take a step back and diffuse a little bit and try and work on, hey, whatever reason you did, here's what happened. Um, For me, uh, part of it is just acknowledging like, hey, my brain doesn't work the same way as your brain. The stuff that makes sense to me, my brain wants to go, that's how the brain works. That's how this is the normal way. It's not, by the way, but... This is your normal way. Everyone should do it this way. It's the most efficient, rational. Everything else is crazy. Um, You take that thought and you go, hold up. That's not widely applicable. In fact, it's only applicable to you. How are they doing it? Understand that it's real to them. We we have had this, like, again, I can, I'm, I'm taking in all the sounds around me. You are the most single track mind person I know if you're reading your phone you're not hearing with your ears nope if you're hearing with your ears you're not seeing with your eyes like your senses like barely work if one of them is fully engaged whereas me I'm I'm soaking it all in all the time 
And if I hear you talking while I'm listening to a show, he can process and both at playing the same a time. game. I'm like, oh, okay, we're we're getting some new input over here. What was that? You never even know what happens. Nope. So there's there's things like that where I've just had to over time understand that it's real. For a long because time. Because for a long time I thought she was like me. I was like, you just need to pull your head out of your ass and get it together <laughs> and realize that when I'm talking, it's probably to you because there's nobody else in our house that I talk to. I'm like, I don't hear you. He's like, No, you hear me. He's like, I'm yelling. You can't possibly not hear me. At, Turns out she doesn't. At this she point, can't. I think you believe me though. Oh, absolutely. Because years and years, you've proved to me you didn't hear it. <laughs> you look at me with this bewildered, like, what are you staring at me for? And I'm like, how, how is this possible? Right. If I'm reading a book, if I'm, yeah. I mean, I am gone. And something we've worked on, like a tool that we have for that mm-hmm. now is if Matt wants my attention, he needs to physically like break the, like touch me. I have me. to throw a book at her. No, no, you don't have to throw a book <laughs> at me. But if you come over and like place a yeah. hand on me or mm-hmm. like physically I, that breaks whatever I'm doing and I can be like, oh, okay. Or I need trying. to say your name and wait for oh, an acknowledgement. Yes. Eye contact. Because sometimes yeah. I don't even respond to my name. So much of it is just understanding you have differences in the way you process and the way you think and the way you feel. And trying to negotiate that over time because how I do it is not going to be the same as someone else. And there's no, there's no one set of tools, but if you can work on your tools together, I think that's really all you can do. Yeah. And I think that you have to, I'm my brain right now. (laughs) I am so foggy and things are just, it's It's a good time to podcast. It's so slow. Anyway, I think it's really important to, like I said earlier, take into consideration what tools you have versus what tools your partner has Mm -hmm. um, and be okay that sometimes you guys won't have the same tools. Yeah. You're going to agree to disagree sometimes. And encourage each other rather than being angry or frustrated that you guys don't have the same tools. Yeah, your capabilities are different, not less or more. Right. I think that that's something that gets really focused on because we come from a culture that really hyper focuses on productivity and efficiency. Or doesn't hyper focus. Okay. <laughs> well, I feel like it no, does. I, I no, like no, it's definitely centered around yeah, productivity. I feel like it's centered around how much did you do and how well did you do it and how hard are you working? Mm-hmm. And I don't know that that necessarily meshes well with neurodivergence, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong to be neurodivergent. It just means that our culture doesn't necessarily reward neurodivergent habits. Yeah. And I think there are things to be learned from how you go about some things. Mm -hmm. And there are things to be learned from how I go about some things. And so if we can use those and see where we both have strengths and combine them, we can both be better for it. Yeah. It's, it's just learning about each other, learning about yourself, breaking down, your masking habits and your habits when you're not masking and everything else, all that comes into play. So side note that I'm thinking about that I'm going to say before we hop <laughs> off, cause this has gone way too long is, uh, I got overstimulated before Matt the other day. Oh my goodness. That was, Never that happens. was a first in our, like maybe, maybe not a in- first first, but it's very few times has that ever happened where you literally were overstimulated mm-hmm. because Typically, I will be over overstimulated long before Decades we ever get there. I yeah, am. you give me three different noises at a time, and my brain just starts turning into static. Which makes no sense to me because you <laughs> play three different sounds at the same time for yourself. Sure, but like, if I'm not prepared for them or I don't like them, that's where we have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I lost it. I didn't lose it. I just was like, "You were not fun to be around." No, I you I were hit my snappy. limit. Well, and it's because I have so many things right now. You've got like extra hormones and whatnot. Yeah. Um, postpartum You're covered in milk. rage. Yeah. I, no, I don't feel like I've actually had postpartum rage. No. But I know people do. <laughs> I've heard people talk about it, and it scares me because I feel like that could happen. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, on that note. Next week, we're going to answer questions. And yeah, we'll really try and do a lot more questions. Uh, there's a bunch out there. So call and leave us a voicemail or email us, or we'll put up a question box yeah. on Matt's story. So go check him up uh, on 
words, go check him out on Instagram at matt.overby. Uh, and subscribe to the podcast. If you want to watch this, it's on YouTube. Oh, our light just turned off. So on that note. Yeah. If, bye. Yeah. Go, go to YouTube. Watch what just happened. We turned really dark randomly. But yeah. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. We'll do it again.